summer is almost here and many of you have probably started uh, making plans for your vacation. You'll want to be able to look back and remember those experiences for years and years. And what better way to preserve those memories than with beautiful photos. Here are some ideas to make the most out of your trip. Light is the most important ingredient for great photography. And soft, warm morning light creates amazing images. Waking up early also means you'll have to deal with uh, fewer tourists and other photographers. Now sunrise isn't the only time to catch uh, good light. Uh, sunsets are also great. The hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset are also known as golden hours because of their soft, warm tones and eye-pleasing shadows. Now the blue hour is the hour after sunset or before sunrise when the sky is still blue but city lights are turned on. Now by comparison, uh, shooting photos at noon on a bright sunny day is probably the absolute worst time for travel photography. Read travel guidebooks about your destination. Uh, search the internet for articles and blog posts to help give you some ideas for photos. Uh, talk to friends who have been there. Uh, reach out to other photographers. Become more knowledgeable about which images will capture the essence of a place. Uh, Instagram, uh, Google Images, and Pinterest. Now once you uh, know some potential photo locations, do more research. What time of day has the best light? Uh, how difficult is it to reach certain vantage points? What time does an attraction open? And when will tourist traffic be low? Uh, what will the weather be like? Now, wandering around uh, you know, with no plans has its place, but being well prepared with research beforehand saves time so you can fully commit to producing amazing travel photography once you're there, and also maximize your time. Enroll in a photography course, either online or with someone like me who offers hands-on photography lessons. Also, uh, go out and practice on a regular basis. This is how you get better. Not because you have the latest gear or use popular Instagram filters. And remember, there is always something new to learn. Now, if you think you know everything about landscapes, great, then go out and challenge yourself shooting portraits of strangers. Uh, stalk animals like a hunter for a taste of how difficult wildlife photography is. Uh, stay up late experimenting with long exposures of the Milky Way. You know, you get the idea. You'll become more skilled and resourceful travel photographer when you take the time to learn new techniques and skills from other genres of photography. A tripod allows you to set your camera position and keep it there. With the camera fixed, you can then take your time arranging the perfect composition. And you can also adjust exposure settings, focus points, and really spend time paying attention to the image you want to create. Or use advanced techniques like HDR, focus stacking, maybe making a panorama. Tripods give you the ability to shoot much slower shutter speeds as well. So like waterfalls, low light, stars, etc. Without worrying about handheld camera shake. ISO low for less sensor noise. And use smaller apertures so more of your image is in focus. You'll have greater creative control over your camera's manual settings when you use a tripod. Now this doesn't mean you have to lug a tripod around with you absolutely everywhere. I don't. But for sharp landscapes, uh, low-light photography, self-portraits, you know, there's flowing water shots, and sunsets, sunrises, a travel tripod makes a huge difference. You can almost always come up with a better photo composition after some experimentation. Sure, take that first shot standing up straight, but don't forget you're able to move. Try laying on the ground for a low angle. 
maybe climb up something nearby, uh, shoot from a higher angle. You know, along with uh, different angles, try shooting from different distances too. You now start with a wide shot, then move to a mid-range version, and finally get up close and personal. Never be satisfied with your first idea for an image. Also, try to include uh, powerful foreground, midground, and background elements too. For example, if your subject is a mountain range, find a flower, a river, an animal, and foreground. This gives images a three-dimensional feel and helps convey scale, drawing a viewer's eye into the rest of the photo. Attempting to take quick snapshots as you rush from one location to another will leave you with the same boring photo as everyone else has. Make sure you plan photography time into your travel schedule. Good travel photography requires a solid time commitment on your part. If you're traveling with friends who aren't photographer, or you know, they aren't into photography, let's say, it can be difficult to find the time necessary. You need to break off on your own for a few hours to make photography your priority. Now, good luck trying to explain to a non-photographer that you like to wait around for an extra 30 minutes until the clouds look better. It doesn't go over well. Or if you're on an organized tour, try waking up early to wander around for a few hours, you know, getting photos before the tour starts. Photography is about really seeing what's in front of you, not just with your eyes, but with your heart and mind too. This requires dedicated time and attention. Slow down and make a conscious effort in your surroundings you know, before you ever press the shutter. And pay attention to details. Are the clouds in an eye-pleasing spot? If not, will they look better in 15 minutes? Uh, sit at a photogenic street corner and wait for an interesting subject to pass by. Then wait some more because you might get an even better shot, or not. But if you don't have the patience to try, you might miss a fantastic photo opportunity. Again, good photography takes time. The better your travel photography will turn out in the long run. There's an old saying, the best camera is the one you have with you. Use is not what makes a great photographer. Just like the type of brush a painter uses doesn't make them a great painter. It's the knowledge, experience, and creativity that makes Professionals do use expensive gear because it allows them to produce a greater range of images. You know, for example, extremely low light star photography, or fast action wildlife photography, or because they want to sell large fine art prints. Instead of buying the latest equipment, spend time learning how to use your current camera settings. It's a far better investment and cheaper too. And finally, the most important tip, have fun. I hope you have found these tips useful and that you capture some great images on your vacation.